Hey everyone, it's Carly Hall, and today I'm going to show you these adapters that I found on Amazon. I will put a link in the video's description to use different types of pens other than Cricut brand pens with your Cricut Explore Air machines and your Cricut Maker machines. Unfortunately, these do not fit in the Cricut Joy, but I found them on Amazon and they are so affordable for everything that you get. In the package, you'll find instructions on how to use them, which I will go over in this video today. And then there's also this helpful pen and marker abbreviation sheet so you know which adapter goes with each type of pen. You can absolutely use other pens other than this, and that's kind of what my experiment today has found. So we're gonna go over that. I know a lot of people recommend cutting open the pen grips and putting those on your pens. I haven't had the best luck with this. It definitely works, but I prefer the adapters, so we are going to cover that today. All right, let's get started in Design Space. In Design Space, I am on a blank canvas, and I have a full tutorial on how to use Cricut pens with your machine, which will go over the basics of how to avoid getting bubble letters, how to use a single line font, all that good stuff, and we'll just kind of do a refresher today on those topics. But before we dive into text, I wanna show you how to use draw images. So on the left-hand side toolbar, there is this image icon. And if you click on the image icon, up at the top, you can choose browse all images. And on the left-hand side, there is this operations type tab. If you click on the plus sign, you can filter to draw only. This is a great library of draw images and you can do a search for whatever you're looking for within those draw images. So you can see all these cute dog images. I made a little coloring book so that I could draw out some images and then a little kid could color them in. And it was so fun to go through all the different images that Cricut has. So if you're looking for draw images, these are all single stroke images so that you won't get that outline bubble look, which is great for all of these different pens. Back on the canvas, we are going to dive into the text tool. So on the left-hand side, click on text and then type out the sentiment that you're looking to write. We'll just use hello. And a quick refresher here. If you were just to change the line type to draw, you would get those bubble letters, which is not the look that we're going for. So we're gonna change that back to cut. Now to find the Cricut fonts that have a draw font style available. Up at the top, you can click on the font tab here. And then under the Cricut tab, since only Cricut fonts will have that draw style, you can filter to writing and that will give you all the fonts that have that single line look. Again, I have a full tutorial on this. This is just a really quick refresher, but you can see if I click on any of these, now it will have that single stroke that I'm looking for. So if you want to use a Cricut writing font, then there are lots of available options within Design Space. If you are looking to download free fonts that work with the draw function, I would recommend searching for sketch fonts or monoline fonts or single line fonts when you're doing a font search. The font that I'm going to use today is one that I downloaded. Let's click on this and change my font. Make sure my filters are all cleared. And it's a system font. I'm sure you've heard me talk about this font artist before, Dixie Type Co. She has a couple of sketch fonts that she recently released. And you can see here, there's this Cottage Sketch, Honeymoon Sketch, Sahara Sketch, and Shiplap Sketch that she has and Honeymoon is my number one fave right now. Now, since most font artists, well, all font artists outside of the Cricut organization don't have access to the uploader that Cricut uses, when you change your font to a sketch font, it may come in and look a little bit crazy like this because right now Cricut thinks that I wanna cut this. I have to come up to the top and make sure to change my line type to draw. So again, up at the top, there's this line type option and that will tell the Cricut the action I want it to do. And we know that I don't wanna cut this, we wanna draw it. And so I can change it to draw 
and all of my problems are solved right there. Let's zoom in a little bit closer. So once you have your writing designed and you're making sure that it's all set to draw, you have this little color swatch to your right. If you click on that, if you're using a Cricut pen, this is extremely useful to get a realistic preview or representation of what your final project will look like. So they have all the different types of pens that Cricut offers, as well as the colors. So let me make a copy. We'll do a couple. And I'll show you the different previews. So we'll use an extra fine one for the first one, fine for the second. And then if I come over to the last one and choose a marker, for example, you can see that the preview will change. That's not actually increasing the stroke or the thickness of my actual image. It's just a representation of what it will look like when I put that pen in my machine to have it draw. So this isn't changing anything other than just a preview of what it will look like. And that goes for the same principle with the color. So if I change the color, I'm not actually changing the color on my project. It's just a preview of the color that I'll put into the machine to actually use. Okay, so now that we have that, we're just going to use one. I'm gonna change it back to just a pen so that you have a good idea of what it looks like. Now, it's good to go right now. If I sent this to draw, my Cricut would know what to do, but most of the time we want to draw and then cut something. So to do that, we're going to add a shape and this can be any shape or image that you want to add. I'm going to add a square. We'll change it to white since I'm going to be cutting a white square or rectangle. And I'm, I'm going to unlock it and fit it behind my words. So we'll just put that there and then highlight both and align them. It looks like it'd be good to go right at this point, but if I send it to make it right now, you'll see that my hello goes on one page and my cut goes on another, which is not what we want. So let's back out of that. And the action that we want to tell the Cricut to do in order for them to hold together, we're gonna to highlight both of them. And down at the bottom, there's this attach function. And the attach works just like the icon. It's like a paperclip. It's going to paperclip that text or that draw layer onto my cut layer. So we're gonna attach those two together and you'll see that if you've done it properly up at the top, it will say attach and it will show you the layers underneath that are attached together. So now when I click make it, you can see that my image, my rectangle and my hello are on the same mat, which is exactly what we want. Okay, so we are about to get started. I'm going to just start with one writing example, but we will do a couple so you can see the different adapters and how they write. Let's continue on and connect to our machine. I'm going to use my maker today and I will be drawing and cutting on medium card stock. So we'll select that. And then you'll see down here, it is prompting me to load my black pen into my machine. So if I had multiple pens, it would prompt me to load the first color in and then down at the bottom, it would show me the next colors so that I know what's coming up. On the machine side, I'm going to load in my mat with a piece of cardstock on it. When I'm using my pens, I like to roll over my star wheels just so that the ink doesn't smear or um, have anything run over it right after it's written. So I just push the star wheels all the way over to the right hand side so that they don't get in the way. The first pen that I wanna show you today is a pen that is almost identical to the Cricut pens. So I'll put a link in the video description. They're from American Crafts, but they are the exact same barrel size as a Cricut pen. So this one actually doesn't need an adapter. So I wanted to show you this. If you have no interest in buying the adapter, you can just buy these pens and they'll fit into the adapter that's already in your machine. So I'm going to pop this one in. We'll just open clamp A, drop our pen in, You'll want to push it down until you kind of hear a snapping noise and then you'll close the clamp. Then we'll click the Cricut C and again, we're going to draw and then cut it. Uh, 
we'll unload that and then peel off our little writing and we'll get ready for the next test. Pop our pen out, make sure to cap it. And then here is the writing from that first pen. You can see that the font that I used, it looks like a single stroke font. There's no bubble letters and it works really well with that pen and the existing adapter. At the end of the video, I will put a photo of all the different pens with the test writing so you can see the different thicknesses of all the different pens that I try, have tried out so far. All right, so for the next test, I'm gonna load our mat back in since we're going to use it again. All right, for the next test, we're going to pop out this white adapter. You may not know that this adapter comes out, but before you rush to pop it out, I just wanna talk about Cricut's warranty. All over the internet, you'll see that if you use third-party tools, that it will avoid your warranty. I'm going to link to Cricut's warranty policy so you can take a look at it. My machine's out of warranty, so if anything happens to my machine, I'm kind of on my own anyway. But if you want to take a look at the warranty policy before you do anything, absolutely take a look at that. I just wanted to put that out there before you make any modifications to your machine. This little guy is actually designed to come out. So with this, I'm not super worried about using third-party tools. I know that a lot of people worry more with heated tools and things like that. So if you still are interested in how to pop it out, you're going to grab the bottom of it. And I like to hold on to the top at the same time. And you gently just push up on the adapter. The first time you pop it out, it might be a little bit difficult, but at the bottom, I'll show you. These guys kind of squish together and they have a little bit of give. So when you're popping them up, you just kind of squish them in and then pop up. And you'll just want to make sure to avoid that lip. So let me do it one more time. You can see how easily you can pop it back in. So underneath the bottom, we're going to push up. And I just like to guide the top. And then you'll pop it up and gently pull it out. So the first pen that we are testing today is going to use the pink adapter. And on each of the adapters, they have printed letters. So this one says BUPM. And if you look at the card, there also is a BUPM, which is the BIC Ultra Fine Point Permanent Marker. So it has a corresponding recommendation for the pen that it recommends that you use with this adapter. But of course, you can try your own. I'm going to use a Tombow pen, this pen here. And I'll put links to all of these in the video description as well. But the adapters fit really well. You just drop in the pen until it's snug. And then you'll place that into the machine without the white adapter. And I pushed mine all the way down. So there's no guesswork on which height you're going to put it in at. You can just place it until it sets rest easily and then close the clamp. In design space, I'm going to click edit. I'm gonna drop down my test so we can see. Click done and then continue on. So for our test, you can see that the Tombow markers write really well. I think this pen is probably my favorite. It's so smooth and the ink is so consistent, so I definitely recommend the Tombow pens with the pink adapter. All right, so I'm not going to show you all of the pens that I tried with the adapter since I'm sure you get the point that you just put the pen in the adapter and pop it in the machine and you're good to go. But I did wanna show you that you can use this adapter even if it doesn't fit your pen perfectly. So the company that I bought the adapters from, they do have a specific adapter for these Crayola Super Tips, but I was cheap and I went with the eight pack instead of the full 20 pack. So you can buy the full pack. It's not very expensive. I'm just so cheap. So I bought the eight pack and then I wanted to experiment with, can you use different adapters? So this one, the one we just used, it fits the Crayola marker, but it's loose. So what I decided to do is I thought, okay, I can try it out. I'll put the adapter in first. And then I'm going to put the pen in 
and I'm not going to drop it down because if I drop it down, well, I'll show you. If I drop it down, it hits the pen or hits the paper rather. So I'm going to hover it just over the paper and then I'm going to clamp it in. So take a look at where your other pens are hitting and then adjust your marker to be about the same height. So behind the roller bar, it's just slightly elevated over the paper, probably about two nickels width. So very, very small above the paper. So I'm going to adjust my design space file again. We'll do another test so you can see how this one works. When you're taking out your pen, just make sure to be careful and hold your pen so it doesn't drop down and then cap that. But you can see that I didn't run into any issues with the pen smearing or dragging. Let me pop this guy off so you can see. But the writing looks perfect, even though that adapter is a little bit too big for the pen. So when you're choosing an adapter, I would just look for an adapter that when you close it in, so let me put this pen back in. When you're closing it in, you just wanna make sure that it's not rocking from side to side and that it has a tight fit. You can see that I cannot turn this around. So that's what I looked for. Something that doesn't move a lot and is holding it pretty tight. So that really opens up your possibilities for the types of pens that can fit into these adapters. All right, I know I said I wasn't going to show you them all, but I do wanna show you a Sharpie because I feel like I have so many Sharpies around my house and that is the most popular, popular request that I see. These adapters do come with adapters that do fit the fine point and the ultra fine point. So your classic Sharpie is the Sharpie fine point. So we're, gonna, we're going to look for the SFP adapter and you can see I'm not sure, well, barely, you can see this is the SFP adapter that fits with the Sharpie fine point. So we're going to grab our Sharpie and the adapter, and then you'll just pop the adapter on. Again, these fit all the way over the pen, so you don't have to guess how far you put them on. You just slide them until they stop. We'll load our pen in. There's no need to guess on the height of your pen. You can drop it in and it will stop for you, which is the benefit of these adapters. And then we'll close our pen in and do another test. And here is how the Sharpie writes. So this I feel like is a game changer, especially with Sharpie, because you can draw on a variety of different surfaces. I put a thin clipboard in my machine and had it draw with a Sharpie. So you can get creative on things that you, you normally wouldn't be able to print on. Now you can draw on with a permanent marker and not be afraid that they're going to wipe off. Here's a look at some of the pens I've tested so far, and I'll do an overhead shot of all of the different pens so you can see the line type with the pen so you can get a good idea of what pen you want to use. The top three don't need any type of adapters. And then the rest of them, I used the adapters from Amazon, which everything will be linked in the video description so you can check those out. And you can see that I use the same size font for this section here. And you can see the different looks that all those pens give. And then a little bit thicker for the Sharpie down at the bottom. Again, I'll do an overhead shot so you can see this a little bit better. All right, I think that's everything covering the adapters. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and definitely make sure to check out my other videos on Cricut tutorials. Or if there's a tutorial that I don't have that you'd like to see, make sure to leave that in the comments as well. I would love to know what you wanna learn. All right, I'll see you in the next video.